There is the temperature record for the last seven and a half years. We've heard various people saying maybe it hasn't gone down very much. It is now going down faster than any of those three rising slopes that I showed you before and has been doing so for getting on for eight years now. There is a clear cooling trend in the data. And, during, and after eight years of that cooling trend, how dare they say that 300,000 people a year are being killed by warming? Now, this you may perhaps recognize. Uh, we have a, a program in, in the UK called the News Quiz, in which the audience are asked to identify what item in the news this was. Would anyone like to tell us what this is? Well, this is Stephen Chu's proposal <laughs> to paint the roofs and the roads white so as to reflect all that evil sunlight back into space and save the planet from global warming. Now consider, if you will, Stephen Chu, the US en Energy Secretary, no less, a member of the President's Cabinet, somebody who is supposed to be a serious individual, has made this daft proposal. The media have widely solemnly and uncritically reported this notion, but few have bothered to verify whether it makes any sense. So, now, um, <laughs> I just love it when the audience are ahead of me. The, like the Chattanooga locomotive uh, whose name he bears, <laughs> the choo-choo exists in a previous century gets all steamed up about nothing, goes slowly and pointlessly backwards and forwards over the same ground, pulls a lot of fellow travelers and baggage along with him, makes scary hooting and howling noises from time to time, keeps on missing points, is invariably late, and demands massive federal subsidies to keep the whole show on the rails. Well, it won't be long before that particular gravy train tips into the gulch, and here's why. Uh, poor Choo Choo hasn't noticed, but some 75% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, which can't be painted, <laughs> or ice, which doesn't need to be. That leaves 25%, of which maybe 2% has roofs or roads on it, and we're being generous there. At most, then, we can actually paint, with Choo Choo's scheme, 0.5% of the Earth's surface. But getting on for half the globe is covered in clouds, which already reflect solar radiation, and they don't need painted either. Most buildings and roads are not in the tropics, where most of the sunlight arrives and needs reflecting back from. White paint, in any case, is not a perfect reflector, up to a third of the Earth's land mass is already covered in snow for up to half the year, and half the incoming radiation from the sun is long wave at the point of arrival and interacts with the atmosphere on the way in. Problems. So the paint fest that the Choo Choo recommends here will only forestall around 0.1% of global warming. I see the figure five being held up. Is that the number of hours remaining to me, or is it <laughs> marks out of 10 for my performance so far? The, the UN, don't do that again, uh, we're enjoying ourselves. <laughs> now, the UN says the planet will warm by 8 Fahrenheit degrees this century. This is an exaggeration of around an order of magnitude, as we shall see. So, Secretary Chu's wizard wheeze will cool the planet by an impressive 0 0.0008 to 0 0.008 Fahrenheit degrees by 2100. Um, now, here we have on the top half of the slide here uh, the costings, which are very important to do. We have to make sure that this measure is cost effective. As you'll see, the area of the Earth's surface is 510 million uh, square kilometers. 0.5% of that is 2,550 billion. You've got to multiply that by 66 coats of paint. That's 168 trillion square meters of paint divided by 10 liters. Uh, to give you 17 trillion litres, and that's going to cost you 
even if you go to Walmart and buy their bin ends of white paint, it's going to cost you a dollar a litre. So you're looking at $17 trillion to save potentially as little as 0.0008 Fahrenheit of global warming. And that is a bargain compared with the waxman Markey bill, to which we now turn. <laughs> now, Waxman and Markey call themselves Democrats, but are they? A few weeks ago, the elected minority in the House asked me to testify before their committee in response to my fellow Nobel laureates' usual tired litany of imagined inconveniences, misfortunes, crises, debacles, disasters, extinctions, catastrophes, cataclysms, Armageddons, and apocalypses. But Waxman and Markey didn't want gore gored, as it were, so they tore up the First Amendment to your Constitution and refused to allow the chosen nominee of the elected minority the freedom to testify. Now it's payback time. <laughs> the stated ambition of the bill is to demonstrate what is laughably called leadership by pointlessly shutting down five-sixths of the economic activity of your great nation. Yet no legislation against carbon emissions, however pious its intention, however drastic its effect, can ever be cost-effective. Why? Because to prevent just two Fahrenheit degrees of warming, we must forego two to 20 trillion tons of CO2 emissions. Now, the annual emissions cuts that Mac Waxman Markey are proposing are five billion out of the six billion tons that are being emitted. So the cooling per year that will be achieved only at the point in 20, 30, 40, or never years' time, when the bill is fully implemented, and they have shown maximum leadership by closing down as much of the economy as possible, they will have saved 0.0005 to 0 0.005 Fahrenheit per year. Now, at that rate, to prevent the eight Fahrenheit degrees predicted by the UN of warming to 2,100 is actually going to take them between 1,600 and 16,000 years. Now, we know what this bill is going to cost because the White House memo leaking it said that it was going to be $180 billion a year. Multiply that by 1,600 to 16,000 years, and the cost of this modest proposal is only 300 to $3,000 trillion dollars. 